good days I've had some hills to climb I've had some weary days and some sleepless nights but when I Good morning to you all. Good morning, Dr. Fraser. We thank God for your presence in this place. We thank God for the presence of his Holy Spirit. And we pray that you will pray with me as we break the bread of life, as we share the word of God. This morning, we heard the reading of the scripture by Dr. Garrison. We thank him for that. You heard the prayers from Minister Knight. You heard the prayers from Dr. Garrison. You heard uh, verses of history yeah. from our own deaconess, Carol Jones. Amen. Amen. Deaconess. Amen. 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 I was pressed uh, last evening to speak to you on black history this morning, but God took me another direction. Uh oh, uh oh. He took me another direction, even though it's important for us to know our heritage. Mm -hmm. It's important for us to know where we came from. Yeah. 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 That's right. But I think it's more important that we look back, but we don't go back. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. yeah. Come on, Dr. Frank. Don't go yeah. back. Yeah. This morning you heard the reading of the scripture from the book of Matthew, chapter 13, verses 24 through 30, which is a parable given to us by our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. If you read that chapter, chapter 13, you will find that there are seven parables there, parables about the kingdom of God. And I think it would be important to us to learn about the kingdom of God. Yeah. Amen. For we serve in that kingdom here on earth, but one day we will live forever in eternity in God's kingdom in heaven. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Yes, it is. It's at hand. So, because the scripture was read to you from that section of scripture, and it's a parable, and parables sometimes are difficult to understand. But Jesus knew that, and when his disciples asked him the question, what does that parable mean? He answered them in the same chapter, chapter 13, in verses 37 through 39. He let them know that he that soweth the good seed is the son of man. The field that that seed is being sown into represents the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom. Uh, but the tares, on the other hand, are the children of the wicked one. The enemy that has sown this wicked seed is the devil himself. Amen. The wicked one. But there's going to be a harvest. Mm -hmm. And that harvest will be at the end of the world. Mm -hmm. And the reapers of that harvest are the angels. Okay. And the question we need to ask ourselves this morning, are we weak <laughs> or are we tear? Watch it, watch it, God. Now you can go hurt me here, 
Yahweh takes. And that's not even the subject of this message. I have entitled this message, While We Were Sleeping. While We Were Sleeping. In chapter 13 of the book of Matthew, there are seven parables, as we said, given to us by Jesus Christ. The word parable means to set alongside. In other words, Jesus used parables to teach and reveal to his disciples heavenly principles based on earthly examples. The parable given to us today in our text is that of the wheat and of the tares. In Israel, the homeland of the Jews, tares, which is considered to be a type of weed, is typically found among growing wheat. Uh, this was not new to the people who were listening to the teaching, for it was prophesied in the book of Psalms, Psalm 78, verse 2, that parables would be given to us to teach us the word of God. Amen. While we slept, mm -hmm. tares were sown among the wheat. Mm -hmm. Walk with me through the text. Both the wheat and the tares were planted in the field together. Both the wheat and the tares share a common experience in having been planted together. The difference in the experience is revealed to us in two different ways. The first way is the character of the seed. The good seed is the wheat. And the tares look almost identical to the wheat. <laughs> Uh, but the tares are false or bastard wheats. Uh, well, how do you know that, preacher? Because wheat has grain inside it, while the tear is empty on the inside. When you are empty on the inside, you can kill me and go eat a hamburger. When you are empty on the inside, you can curse your elders and sleep at night. When you are empty on the inside, you can walk away from your own children expecting the state to take care of them. When you are empty on the inside, you die and leave nothing for your family. When you're empty on the inside, you can lie and destroy a person's character and it means absolutely nothing. This is the character of the tares among the wheat. While we were sleeping, tares were sown among the wheat. I put to you this morning that in every country, in every state, in every city, and in every church in this country, there are tares among the wheat. Yeah. Mm. The wheat and the tear look just alike. But if you want to know one from the other, all you have to do is walk among the tear for a little while. Listen to them in their workplaces. Uh, View their posts on Facebook. Yeah. Listen to their private conversations. Yeah. The great difference between the wheat and the tear is that the wheat bears fruit and ends up bowing down to, due to its weight. Yeah. However, the tear is a bit different. Mm -hmm. Being hollow and empty, it remains upright and prideful because the emptiness inside them does not allow it to bend or bow down to anyone or anything. You see, there's a difference between tares and the wheat. While we were sleeping, tares were sown among the wheat. You see, we should let the wheat and the tare grow together according to Jesus Christ. They look just alike, mm -hmm. but the character of the seed is quite different. Yeah. The character of the sower is quite different. Satan is the sower of the tares, mm -hmm. and Jesus is sowing 
the wheat. The, the, the life is in the good seed. Yeah. And that seed is the word of God. Yeah. Every minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ casts good seed every time they preach a sermon. Yeah. All right. Some people pick it up, Dr. Askins, and it makes a difference in their life. All right. And their life is richer because of it. Yes, sir. Some people hear the same sermon, yes, sir. and it means nothing to them. Nothing. Yeah. nothing and they nothing. walk away empty, yes, just like they came. Amen. Right. The sun shines on mud and clay ah. the same way. Yeah. It hardens one, and it softens the other. Uh -huh. The gospel of Jesus Christ falls on everyone under the sound of my voice both here and on social media. Some hearts are hardened yeah. and say, I don't care how much you preach, preacher. I'm going to do what I want to do, how I want to do it, and when I want to do it. I'm going to do it any or how. And some hearts are softened because they walk with Jesus Christ and the Word of God planted deep within their hearts is strengthened because of it. You see, while we were sleeping, tears were sown among the weed. Uh, we pressed toward the mark of the high calling. But even on our best day, we sometimes get it wrong. Paul put it this way. Every time I desire to do good, evil is always present. Every time that I would do good, I find myself not doing it. And the evil that I don't want to do, that's what I do. And Paul asked the question, Oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? You see, that brings up an important picture I want to share with you. See, under Roman rule, what they would do to somebody who committed a crime, especially the crime of murder, they would take that dead body and tie it to the back of the one who performed that evil deed. And they would allow them to walk around in the city That's right. 12 days and 12 nights carrying a dead body. Until the dead body, you know, after four days, it begins to stink. And they had to walk around with the dead body. And you would hear them cry out, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? Yeah, so Paul asked the same question. He says, I'm the chief sinner among all sinners. And I want you to know that I don't always get it right. Sometimes I get it wrong. But I also want you to know that I'm not a tear sown among the weeds. For I live from day to day, pressing toward the mark of the high call. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. yes, somebody yes, bring me a tissue. Yes, pressing toward the mark of the high call. But even so, we have a treasure in these earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. Both the wheat and the tares were planted. Both of them progressed together. Because the servants mm -hmm. came and said to the master, there are some tares among the weeds. That's right. What happened that these tares yes. were planted among the weeds? Mm -hmm. He says, what happened? He said, where did these tares come from? And the master said, while we were sleeping. While we were sleeping. The enemy came mm -hmm. and sown tears yeah, yeah. among the weeds That's right. while we were sleeping. Don't miss it, church. Yeah. 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 We with you, Doc. We with you. When I was a young boy mm -hmm. in elementary school, we had to learn French. Oh, no. And the way that we yeah. were taught French mm -hmm. were through songs yeah. and rhymes. Yeah. And there was one song mm -hmm. that I will never forget. And it was entitled, Farah Yeah. <laughs> and I know that once I give you this, you're going to remember it for the rest of the day. Yeah. Farah Jaka. Yeah. 
Ferris Jacques. Dorme vous. Yes. Dorme vous. Yes, sir. Sonnes, Les Martinez. Yeah. Sonnes, Les Martinez. Din, din, dun. Din, din, dun. How do you translate that, preacher? I don't know, Doc. In English, it says, Are you sleeping? Are you sleeping? Brother John. Work it, work it. Brother John. Work it, work it, Doc. Morning bells are ringing. Morning bells are ringing. Ding, dang, dong. Ding, dang, dong. While you were sleeping, tears were so many among the people. While you were sleeping. While we were partying at Mardi Gras. While we were tailgating at the Ravens game, oh, yeah, yeah, while yeah. we were backing that thing up at the reunion, oh. while we were vacationing <laughs> in our villa in the Bahamas, oh. while we were laid back on the cruise ship, yeah. an enemy so snuck in <laughs> and some tales Come on, man. the week. Yeah. Wow. You were sleeping. Yeah, but I got some more for you. Wow, we were sleeping. Come on, Dr. In 1962, prayer was removed from the classroom. Yeah. Uh, wow, we were sleeping. In 1980, the Ten Commandments were banned from all public places. Yeah. Uh, while we were sleeping in 1983, a moment of silence where students were encouraged to pray. Yeah. was banned from all schools. Mm -hmm. While we were sleeping in 1992, prayers led by members of clergy and public graduation ceremonies were declared outlawed. Uh, while we were sleeping in the year 2000, student-led prayer at public school football games yeah. were banned. Uh, uh, while we were sleeping, a uh, violent crime has grown uh, tenfold. Uh, uh, while we were sleeping, our divorce rates have quadrupled. Uh, while we were sleeping, births to single mothers have increased tenfold. Yeah. While we were sleeping, teenage suicide rate has quadrupled. Yeah. Yes. While we were sleeping, SAT scores in schools have dropped to their lowest point, uh, below 80 points from where they were. <coughs> While we were sleeping, Christian morality in this country is frowned upon, even to the point of being hated. Yes, while we were sleeping, yeah. those are the things that happened. There was a great philosopher by the name of Edmund Burke. He put it this way. He says in 1795, he says, The only thing necessary for the triumph of evil is for good men to do nothing. While we were sleeping, the enemy has sown tears among the weak. While we were sleeping, an enemy has done this. Uh, the weak and the tears, they progressed or they grew together. They also were processed or harvested together. The servants, the workers of the master, wanted to pull up the tares because the tares are not supposed to be among the wheat. Uh, but the master said, leave it alone. Let them grow together. Let them stay together. Let them stay with the good and wholesome wheat. He said, let the tares stay with the wheat because here is what the problem is could be. He says in your zeal to uproot the tares, you could uproot some wheat. In your eagerness to destroy what's no good, you might inadvertently destroy what's good and what needs to be there. He said, let them grow together. He said, so I tell you what to do. Let them grow together and when I come, he says, when I come, yeah. At harvest time, he says, this is what I'll do. He says, I am the great separator. I am the one who will separate the tares from the wheat. Don't you try to do it because you'll mess it up. You'll pull up some good wheat instead of some bad tares. You'll destroy what's good instead of destroying what's bad. What I want you to be aware of. 
is that it's time to wake up. It's time to wake up from your sleep. Because if you don't, the tears will take over. And we can see tears running rampant in the wheat field even today. I want you to understand something. Most of us know the time that we went to bed last night. Most of us know the time that we woke up this morning. But I guarantee you, none of us know when we actually went to sleep. None of us know that. Only God knows that. And if it wasn't for God's loving finger touching you this morning, you'd still be in that sleeping state. It's time to wake up. He says, while you were sleeping, tears were sown among the weak. He says, I want you to know, I don't want you to use this to be judgmental. I don't want you to try to figure out who's a tear and who's a wheat. Because you're going to get it wrong every time. For we don't know the heart of man. We don't even know our own heart. For the Bible says that our heart is wicked above that which we can ever know. So he says, don't try to figure it out. All I want you to do is be mindful of the fact that there are tears among you. And the tares seek to kill and destroy. He says, but if you would be the wheat that I've called you to be, then you'll stand ever so tall. But you'll bow down when I ask you to bow down. And when you bow down, you'll notice that the wheat is still standing tall. Why? Because it's empty. And it will not bow down or bend to anyone or anything. He says, don't mess with the tares. He says, that's my job. He says, let the wheat and the tear grow together. And when I come, I will do the separating. And the tear will be burned and the wheat will be barned. All right, all right. Let me walk that again. Oh, yeah. Don't miss it. The tear will be burned. Yeah, Lord. And the wheat will be barned. Hallelujah. There's only one letter difference. Yeah. Sometimes that's the only thing that distinguishes us. From a tear. It's just one letter. Uh -huh. It's just one letter. Just the change of a letter. Distinguishes. Mm -hmm. The fate of the tears. And of the weed. Let them grow down. Yeah. Invite folks who don't know Jesus. Yes sir. And when the seed of gospel. Is planted. God will change that life. Yeah. Yeah. And the folk. Who don't look like much. God will save them in an instant. You can't tell who's saved by what they look like. He says, I know I've been born again. And I hope you know you've been born again. Because there should be a melody in your heart unto the Lord. Right, Sister Askins. I know I've been saved because the word says in Romans 10, 9 through 13. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth yes, sir. the Lord Jesus, yes, sir. and shalt believe in thy heart yeah. that God has raised him from the dead. Yes, sir. What did he say? Thou shalt, thou shalt. be saved. Uh -huh. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, right. and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Yeah, how shall they call upon him whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him whom they have not heard? And how shall they be without a preacher? How shall they preach except they be sent? How beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace. Don't try to separate the dead from the weak. Don't try to separate it. Because we'll get it wrong. We'll get it wrong, God. Each and every time. God wants us to be discerners. He wants us to have the discerning spirit so we know the difference. And that we guard ourselves against the tears. That's right. That we don't try to judge who's a tear and who's a weak. We pray for them. And ask that God would soften their heart. That they might come over to the weak side. Instead of remaining on the tear side. Oh. God bless them. And God bless you. Forevermore. Amen. Amen. Hopefully. 
something to share with you this morning that would stay with you the rest of the day other than Pharaoh Jaka that you might <laughs> that you might walk in it this day that you might have some enlightenment in your minds and in your hearts that you know that we are in the last days and that the harvest is soon to come and that we should be mindful to make sure that we are wheat and not tear. Don't worry about anybody else. We have enough to worry about by focusing on our own lives in our own walk with Jesus Christ. For when the harvest comes, there's going to be no more excuses no more pleading with this one or that one. That's right. No more talking about what you have done or what you haven't done. Yeah. The harvest time will come swift and the angels of God will reap the harvest and separate the wheat mm -hmm. from the tail. Is there one this morning that does not know Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior? For he came down from 40 and two generations. He was born of a virgin. He walked among men. He healed the lame. He gave sight to the blind and hearing to the deaf. He made the lame to walk. He raised the dead. But coming to his own, they received him not. And he allowed his own creation to crucify him on an old rugged cross. For they beat him with 40 stripes minus one. They put an old rugged cross on his back and led him to a hill called Golgotha, also known as Calvary. They hung him high and stretched him wide. They put a crown of thorns on his head. They nailed his hands and they nailed his feet. And just to make sure that he died that day, they pierced his side. And all of the blood and the water ran freely down, covering the ground. And now Jesus Christ wants that same blood to cover you. He died that day. Yes, he did. He died that Friday. And they took him down from the cross. And they laid him in a borrowed tomb. And he laid there all night Friday. All day and all night Saturday. But early. Early Sunday morning, God raised him from the dead. And now he sits at the right hand of the Father, making intercession for you and for me. Praise God for the intercession. For without his shed blood, without his covered blood, we still be lost in our sins and on our way to hell. That's right. Thank God this morning is there one who would like to accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. I take it that all in this house and hopefully all on social media are saved this morning. But there might be someone here or someone out there that does not have a church home. And maybe you want to consider Philadelphia Christian Church Ministries pastored by the Bishop Clarence R. Askins Jr. And he would gladly receive you with open arms and welcome you to this place of worship that you might come and worship with like same believers that you might pray with us that you might study with us that you might partake of the word of God that you might be richer for it and if there's one this morning you can raise your hand even if I can't see you send a message on Facebook letting somebody know you need prayer or you desire to come to the Lord Jesus Christ. Hopefully there's one this morning. And if not. Hopefully my task is complete. May God bless you. And keep you. Amen. 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 Amen.